I've been using the digital AccuBlade probably about a year and a half. Now the evolution of the analog AccuBlade to the digital AccuBlade uh, w was fantastic. Uh, the first time, I remember distinctly the first time I used it in the operating room and you know I, I felt like I wanted to get up and go Eureka because it just, uh, it was so, so, it was wonderful. I guess that would be the best way to say it. Uh, that it was logical and in terms of the evolution of uh, small spot sizes and then scanning devices to deliver laser energy, carbon dioxide specific laser energy to the human larynx where precision is so critical um, that this was just the next step and, and the quantum jump from you know sort of tolerating an analog device to now having a device that finally was surgeon friendly, user friendly. And so what we get then, you know, in terms of advantages, well obviously the number one advantage is precision. Now to me the number two advantage is a reproducible laser tissue interaction that will give us then an ability to achieve expected outcomes with our patients. So in a world of evidence-based medicine, when we start talking now of being able to deliver expected laser tissue interactions of a certain length, a certain width, and a certain depth, uh, and minimal collateral damage uh, deep as well as uh, laterally, uh, we're talking then about uh, being able to take these outcomes and moving them from Vanderbilt to any other place in the country uh, as long as the person utilizing that laser has had an opportunity to learn how to utilize this digital AccuBlade and what type of an approach they want to make to achieve certain outcomes uh, based upon the pathology that they face. I've found it easier to teach with to both my fellows as well as residents because a lot of the a lot of the question marks, a lot of that you know unknown such as how deep am I going to go now are controlled so well with the with this uh, scanning uh, delivery. So in terms of minimization of deep and lateral uh, thermal damage, you know, the, the scanning delivery of the laser beam is really the key there. And how the laser is set up at the console by the nurse or the laser nurse or the surgical assistant or whomever it is that is pushing buttons and setting things up. But by telling the laser what size and what kind of a beam you want delivered, that helps to minimize the lateral and deep damage because in so doing that you are you know telling the laser or you are programming into the laser uh, the depth of penetration and the uh, size of the spot that will be scanned. So it's a great laser then to do photoablative work for recurrent respiratory papillomatosis especially as you get close to the human vocal fold and and or treating superficial spreading variety of papillomatosis where you know scanning that that, that uh, papilloma as it spreads out on the vocal fold the ventricle the false vocal fold of the subglottis allows you to literally uh, photoablate layer by layer by layer uh, and it's just exquisitely precise uh, if you want to work in bilateral to vocal fold immobility and want to perform a posterior transverse chordotomy or an endoscopic laser or retinoidectomy, uh, once again you can make your cuts in the, f in the uh, chordotomy operation uh, from medial to lateral uh, with a straight line and make your cuts just, just anterior to the vocal process and see the exquisite precision associated with those cuts as you work from the surface of the vocal fold uh, inferiorly to be able to cut the uh, anatomical uh, tendon or, or, uh, or attachment, uh, the ligamentous attachment of the uh, vocal fold to the vocal process. And as you photoablate in the endoscopic retinoidectomy, you have the exquisite precision to see yourself photoablating mucosa coming to the mucoperichondrium junction and then photoablating, you know, your mucoperichondrium and your perichondrium flat or level and then working next to denude further mucoperichondrium from the underlying arachnoid and then photoablating that arachnoid 
working from the top to the bottom uh, in the stepwise fashion that that operation is performed. Even in the face that no two papillomas are the same, uh, no two posterior transverse chordotomies or endoscopic or retinoidectomies are the same, nor are any vascular lesions the same. But given the pathological types, my ability to, you know, reproduce uh, my previous good results uh, are afforded me by that digital AccuBlade more so than any other previous delivery system. And through that, I feel that I can then teach residents and fellows these same techniques in the same reproducibility uh, with the same uh, precision laser tissue interaction uh, that's predictable and ultimately, uh, you know, the ability then to uh, reproduce best practices and, and uh, you know, have your or their results fall within the same uh, realm as mine in terms of uh, being able to achieve that best practice and ultimately then being able to gather the data, you know, so that we can have evidence-based medicine. So am I excited about the introduction of the digital AccuBlade? Absolutely, yes. Do I find it helpful to me as a laryngologist? Absolutely, yes. Uh, do I find it helpful in terms of training the future generation of otolaryngologists and perhaps laryng as well as laryngologists because of the fellowship training? Absolutely, yes. Is there an opportunity for somebody to come out with a, an improved bell or whistle, you know, in the form of Generation 2 digital AccuBlade or de Generation 3? Well, I'm sure there is because I don't think anybody wants to rest on laurels. I am sure that uh, engineers, physicists, marketing people, and surgeons alike are all looking forward to say, hey, this is great, but. And it's that but that keeps the minds churning to come up with something that's even better than that which we have now. Uh, and I look forward to that. Uh, and I look forward to continuing to practice and hopefully having it in my hands because it will be spectacular based upon how good of a tool and how, and how helpful the digital AccuPlate has been in the year and a half that I've had the opportunity to utilize it.